Hi guys, how are you? Cheers. And I just have a really basic one for you today. Just a few updates and just let you know what's been going on and what I've got brewing and, and what's coming up in the next couple, in the next week or so. But first, let's talk about the home brew that I'm drinking. This is a... Uh, this is... Sorry, my eye has all of a sudden decided to be itchy. This is a Munton's uh, beer kit. It's a pale ale beer kit, actually, this one was, which was sent to me. And um, along with it came uh, some uh, carapils grains. And um, I threw in four pounds of, sorry, I'm still, I still have a cold. I'm, I'm fighting, I think I got like three colds in a row or something this year. I never get sick. I usually never get sick, but I've been slacking on my uh, vitamins and stuff. I usually take, you know, vitamin D and things like that. And, vitamin C and I just I've ran out and I haven't got any new ones so okay so uh, I threw in four pounds of two row grain um, in a mash along with the uh, the carapils and I threw in 250 grams of dextrose too just to just to make sure because I wasn't sure about my two row grains if they've been sitting around for about a year and a half I wasn't sure how much uh, you know, fermentability they were still going to have, but apparently they're doing okay, so that's good. Uh, it's got a nice tight head on it, and well, let's give it a whirl. You know, the first thing I notice is that it's creamy. It's got a nice creamy mouthfeel to it, and. Uh, I let a friend of mine try it the other day, and he said the same thing. So, uh, it does have a nice mouthfeel to it. it. It's a nice beer, actually. Simple home brewing, easy home brewing. You know, this took me, well, it took an hour to mash the grains using the double pot method, and uh, which I swear by. That's a great, a great way to, to do a mini mash. It's good stuff. And so an hour for that, but I didn't stand here and watch it. I went and did other things, you know. Um, somebody also mentioned that uh, a great way to uh, do a mini mash is to just use your oven. Set your oven to 150 or, you know, somewhere in there. And, you know, try to get a thermometer. If you've got a digital, like mine's got a digital setting on it, so you can, hopefully it's accurate. But it's a great way to keep your, your mash. You just throw the pot in the oven with the lid on. And, uh, <laughs> excuse me. And, uh, and do your thing there. But I found it just, you know, by using the double pots, one inside the other. And so, once you've done that, then you just do your normal, uh, you bring it to a boil, you boil it for a few minutes just to kill everything, and then you add it to your beer kit simple as that. It's great and it makes good beer. It's a nice compromise between uh, you know, all grade and you know, just a, just a kilo style brewing. So it's good stuff there. Okay, so somebody asked me about okay, what size pots? This looks like, looks like it would be about a 10 inch pot. Had this one for years. In fact, I think I bought, I bought this when I first started home brewing 25, 26 years ago, whenever it was. This one's not, I didn't clean this out after I used it. But that's going to be about a, I'd say that's about a 12 inch. So this is about a 10 inch, that's a 12 inch. You're just, you're just putting, you're just putting one inside the other like that. Okay? And the way I've got these, I was just lucky the handles on this pot actually stop it from touching the bottom. So you get a little bit of, of uh, water. So you can see the difference in the, right? So what you do, is you you get your strike water figured out. How much water are you going to need for your grains? How much grains you've got? So it's usually um, one uh, a, one quart of water per gallon of grain. Sorry, one quart of water per pound of grain. Uh, and uh, so you you get that water in here, and then you sit this down inside of this pot, and then you add water to the outside pot. And you add just enough water until just just before this one starts to float. You don't want it floating around. You kind of want it to stay, you know, stay put, right, in the center. And then you do your mash. And you, you bring your temperature up. It takes a little while to get the temperature up. 
But that's the whole point because it also takes a little while to get the temperature down and that's what you want. You don't want it to drop. Um, you want to have a lid on the inner pot. I don't know where the one for this went. It's around somewhere. But you definitely want to have a lid for the inner pot. You get your stuff up to temperature. You dough in your grains. You check your temperature. You get it up, down, whatever you got to get it. Put your lid on. Turn off the heat. And you're good for an hour. It's, it's cool. Uh, it's a really cool way of doing it. Really cool. Okay, so that's how I did that. And uh, look at it, it makes a great beer. It doesn't have the best head retention, but it's got some lacing. You can tell there's a nice body to it. And it's good beer. I'm enjoying this one, it's really cool. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, uh, bought some stuff, some supplies. Um, I got a couple of, um, I don't know, holiday gifts, I guess, from some people. Um, guy by the name of Adrian from Australia, um, he uh, sent me a message and he said, Hi, Craig, you know, he said he'd like to send me, you know, 40 bucks Australian just because uh, first to buy some beer supplies. And uh, so he said, you know, do you have a PayPal? And I said... I have a PayPal, but you know, I, I my, my normal reaction to something like that is, you don't have to do this, really. I mean, this is you know, when somebody asks me for my PayPal, um, I feel like, well, should I give it to them because do I really want, like, you know, I don't want to make it look like, yeah, 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 send me money, you know. So I said to the guy, I said, well, you know you really don't have to do this I mean but but at the same time if you really want to do it it's completely up to you it's like you know if someone comes to your home a friend or a you know a relative family member or whatever and they bring you a present they you don't say no you don't you don't refuse it you, you accept it with with pride um, if somebody offers to take you out for dinner you know you don't say well no you don't need to do that you know you, you, you accept it. So that's what I did. Okay, so that's that's that. It's awkward. It's weird, but it's very kind. Um, very kind of him to do that. So it ended up being about $35 Canadian. So I got that. And this other thing happened. So apparently, last spring, a letter came in the mail for me, but it was delivered to the wrong address. It had it actually had the wrong address on it. Uh, it had the neighbor's address and a different postal code. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, the fellow lives nearby, like with you know the next town over kind of thing. Um, his name is. I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right. His name is Yacht. That's how he says it's pronounced. Y a c h t is how he says it's pronounced. Um, and so in this, so this envelope, I guess it got delivered to the neighbor. The neighbor brought it over to here. Maybe it got noticed, or or maybe it got sh you know put on a pile or something, and it got shuffled underneath stuff, and it ended up in a box. So the other day, I was digging through this box to try and find some other thing I was I got in the mail that I was looking for, and up comes this envelope with, you know, my name and the neighbor's address on it. And so I felt a, it felt kind of thick, you know, so I opened it up and there was this note, which uh, he wrote me. And uh, there was 20 bucks cash in there. So the problem with this is, is it came, like, I didn't get this, like, it, I guess it got to the house and the neighbor brought it over. Maybe I, maybe she gave it to me, or maybe it got put down and was meant to be given to me. I don't remember. But anyway, I found it. So if you're watching, sir, thank you very much. I did get your your gift. And um, just a long time later, it's like finding 10 bucks in your coat. Although it was 20 bucks, actually, in this case. So thanks, guys. So that was, what, 35 to 55 bucks. Plus I had $20 in my PayPal from some other thing that happened. So I took this money and I went and I bought a few things. I bought nothing spectacular, really. Just uh, I bought a Cooper's IPA beer kit, which I have brewing right over here. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, 
I bought a, a wine kit. I have no idea how to pronounce this. I'm going to try to pronounce it, and then I'll show you, and you can, you guys can see what you think. Okay, excuse me. Valpolicia, no, Valpolicilla. I have no idea. There it is. Now this isn't the one I was supposed to actually buy. I don't know how I ended up with this one. I must have grabbed the wrong one. Um, I told my uh, homebrew supplier I wanted one with the with the oak powder in it, the oak chips, you know. And he he told me which ones had those, and so I grabbed what I thought was a Chardonnay, I think. Uh, I do apologize for the sniffing. I I can't help it. Uh, and I guess I grabbed the wrong box. But anyway, I could have returned it and exchanged it, but I thought, what the hell, I'll brew it up, see what the hell it is. It is a red wine, and we'll see. And I bought, I also bought a Brewer's Best, uh, another uh, uh, American cream ale. It's a good, a good kit to do. It's not expensive, and it makes great beer. I've done a, I've done a couple of them. So that's those. Uh, what else? That's it. That's all. That was that came to you know that was sixty bucks the wine kit. That was thirty, and then the beer kit the, the Coopers. So it came to a little more than what I what I had in my hand. But it's, you know that's what bank cards are for, right? So uh, yeah. So that's that's that. I've got that going. Um, you know, kind of I got stuck drinking store bought beer over the holidays, and I said. You know the hell with this. I got to get a batch. I got to get a, a chain going here. You know, a pipeline. So uh, let's just grab the camera and grab this. Go around here. And this is the uh, this is the Cooper's IPA. I didn't do anything to it. I just I just threw it down with a five and seven. Uh, it's pretty cold down here in the dungeon right now. Uh, actually, why is this crooked? Hang on, let me straighten that. There. Must have been the earthquake. Uh, no, just joking. Uh, pretty cold. Um, I don't know what that's sitting at. It's, it's a little warm. I could probably take the blanket off now. But it's just Cooper's yeast, so it doesn't, it doesn't care if it's a little high. Um, I think it's sitting at 72 or something like that, 73. Uh, look, at the, look at the Krausen on that. Look at the action there. That, that, really, that really went to town at the beginning. So that's that going. And here's the the wine I put down. I think it's sitting at. Uh, it doesn't have a thermometer, but by the by the feel of that, feels about 72, 73, 74 maybe. You know, it's just I'm just guessing. It doesn't matter. As I can tell, it's fine. As long as it's not up around 80 or down below 70, it's fine with these wine kits. And here's another one I've got uh, that I've racked. And it's just finishing up so I can uh, filter, not filter it, but, uh, you know, uh, clear it and stabilize it and whatnot. So those are what I've got going. And, you know, the, the nice part about that, sorry, let's get this back over here. The nice part about that, sheesh, there we go, is that it was one night and I, I, I got... You know, my wine, I, I uh, kegged one batch of beer, cleaned out the fermenter, put the Cooper's batch down, uh, made a wine kit, siphoned a wine kit into secondary, all that in a couple of hours. You know, you, you can really get a lot done. Um, you know, I was thinking to myself... And I don't really want to. I don't really want to go on about this because we've talked about this over and over again. But I was just thinking to myself, you know, it's really nice to have the choice. You know, if you can get to a point where you can make great beer like that from just a simple kit and maybe some grains and maybe even some extra hops or or, or whatever, then you can. You know, I'm not knocking any any method or I'm not knocking all grain or anything like that. But if you're stuck for time and you need to get some beer on. You know, it's nice to have the choice. That's all I'm saying. It's nice to be able to say, well, I'd love to do an all-grain batch, but I don't have time. I don't have six hours. So I can, I'm can. i going to get a simple batch going. It's going to be almost as good. It's going to be great beer. 
and you saved a lot of time. I was in a forum the other day. It was uh, the, the Homebrew Talk forum. I was just poking around in there, you know, doing a few searches and stuff and just seeing. And I found a thread. Uh, well, there's a few threads about me in there, but this particular one is fairly recent. Uh, well, it's about a year old, so it's not that recent, but, you know, it's um, it's it's a lot more recent than some of the other older threads that are on there. So this one I thought, oh, it, the, and the thread, the name of the thread was CraigTube, so I thought, oh, God, i got to read this. i got to see what, you know, what's going on. Why, why did somebody start a thread about me? Uh... So I went in there and I was reading some of the comments, and actually I was I was pretty impressed. I was pretty pleased uh, with some of the comments. There, people were saying good things, and so that's that's a good feeling. Um, it, it wasn't like that a few years ago, uh, so you know I don't know whether I've changed or whether the community has changed. I have no idea. You know I have done much more uh, in the way of of craft brewing and. and uh, all grain and extracts or partials and mini mashes and things that I had done back a few years ago. So I think uh, maybe maybe I've you know I've pulled up the bootstraps a little bit and got on and did some actual great methods of brewing. And I think that made a difference because I didn't think I don't think they liked you know a few years ago when I was just doing kits all the time, you know, with a spatula and you know all that stuff on the stove and you know so. You know, a kilogram of dextrose in there, so it's good that the that the it's turned around and they're saying good things. One guy, uh, although one guy, he said, um, he said, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to watch his videos, but uh, you know, I, I, I want to like the guy and I want to watch his videos, but I can't get past his disgusting burps. That's what he said. So he can't watch my videos because of my my disgusting burps. I don't know. Is he sharing a room with the queen? I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, if you drink beer, <coughs> you're going to burp. Um, I could cover my mouth and go, oh, excuse me, and you know, but hey, come on. We're, we're guys here, and maybe there's a few gals around, but, you know, we, we drink beer and we burp sometimes, and I don't want to, you know, hell with it. And a couple other guys were talking about how my videos were kind of quirky. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but it sounds, it sounds interesting. And they didn't, I think they meant it in a good way. So it was, it was fun to read. Anyway, um, so I've also got some uh, apple juice here. So I'm going to be doing my, uh, I picked this up today. I had this before, but the kids drank it. So this time I've got mouse traps all down the stairs there, so if they try to come down, okay. We're gonna do the Pat Max brewing caps with these, with that. Uh, I'm just doing a simple apple cider, nothing exciting. I just want to show how the the caps work. I've done the little thing on on Homebrew Wednesday already, but I want to do an official. Um, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I want to do an official of uh, uh, sort of an easy home brewing video with that because I think it's fun. I think those caps are great and they're a good way to start out and or not even start out. A good way to brew some interesting stuff. You know? Oh yeah, I also I uh, went and got some ingredients. I'm gonna be filming a Craig's kitchen in the next day or so. Uh, involving some chicken and it's a beautiful recipe. Uh, it, uh, um, it it's um, it's one of just one more thing you can do with chicken. Uh, so there's a Craig's kitchen video. There's a sort of an easy home brewing with the Pat Max Brewing Caps video. Um, I've, I've got a sour beer kit that I'm going to be doing tomorrow night. Um, I'll be filming parts of that. That was sent to me by American Bastardale. Uh, got to get that on. Just, things have been, you know, busy these the past while, a few days, week, whatever. And uh, But that's down in a cool place. So the grains are being kept, you know, cool and like they're almost refrigeration temperature down there near the wall where there's a bit of a draft. So everything's fresh and it'll be fine. I've got the yeast and the, the little vial of, of uh, bacteria, wherever it's called, in the fridge there. So we're all good with that. 
Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. I feel another burp coming on, so I better get going. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Yeah? Huh? <laughs> Look at that. Wee. All right, guys. I'm going to get going. Thanks for watching. Just a basic one tonight. Although this was all it was really meant to be in the beginning. It was just a basic blog, a brew blog, you know, video blog, whatever you want to call it, of what's going on, what's updates, and what I'm brewing, and what's coming up, and that kind of thing. So that's, that's what we've got today. Sometimes I take a walk and I fall in the snow. Other times I just stand here and talk. And that's what we've got today. So thanks for watching. Sorry it's a bit late. Please check out tgtshirts.com if you want a CraigTube t-shirt. Help support the cause. And 17crew.com uh, is a great forum. I'm in there almost every day when I can. Um, there's a section. I've got my own section in there if you want to ask me a question in there. It's a great place to, to do it. And there's other sections in there as well that you can ask your question. And there's lots of other home brewers in there that are there to help you and the nice thing about it is that it's it's um, it's a new forum and if you get in there now there's a burp sorry <laughs> you're never gonna hear the end of that <laughs> or, or he's never gonna hear the end of that if, they, if he's if he's watching which he probably isn't because he can't stand my burps it's a fairly <laughs> it's a fairly new forum and if you get in there quick you know now uh, you can be one of the one of the pioneers, you know, so that three, four years from now, you can say, yeah, yeah, I've been here since the beginning. I'm out. Cheers out. Thanks, guys. Be safe. And we'll talk soon. Cheers.